injuries caused by other sharks. And also, <coughs> the scalpel can cause the bleeding when it cuts, and so the blood can actually obscure the surgical field, making it harder to operate. And also, um, in several studies, it has shown that 50% of Venetians come in contact with the actual patient's blood in half of their uh, operations. And this is bad because if you're treating a patient with HIV, you, can, you want to limit the amount of blood you're in contact with because you don't want to get HIV results. And so to counter this, uh, they tried to develop safety scalpels. And safety scalpels are pretty much just a different type of scalpel that has a feature to it that makes it more safe, such as a sheet that goes over the blade, or maybe it retracts. However, uh, in 2005, it was estimated that less than five percent of the acute market or acute care market that use a reusable scalpel is actually started using them. And there are several reasons for this. It's pretty much the surgeons were reluctant to switch over to using them. Some of them, uh, an interview said maybe it was too clumsy in their hand, or maybe it didn't uh, very obstructed their view. And in another study conducted by, I believe, the CDC, uh, it was found out that actually uh, safety scalpels injuries were actually four times as many as the reusable ones. And there are also reasons for that, such as the safety mechanism not being properly uh, used, or maybe it wasn't actually used at all. And pretty much uh, the reason for elective surgery is because they wanted to have a way to pretty much regulate the amount of injuries they have while during surgery, and also to limit the amount of blood loss in the patient. Okay, so I'll be going over the brief history of the uh, soldier like surgery. So it was first commercially, uh, first commercially, uh, the first commercial the first commercial electric surgical device was created by Dr. Gordon T. Bogey. And he worked on this high frequency current that delivered cutting, uh, which was a cutting loop from 1914 to 1927. And in 1926, it was first used in an operating room and successfully removed the uh, involvement. So how it works. So, so there's uh, an active electrode that passes current through the, through the tissue, and it, what happens is that the current takes a path with the least amount of resistance. And the current can actually be modified using like different voltages, so it can be applied uh, with different current and vary the heat, the different heat and energy that's applied to. So, a patient is actually uh, has has a return uh, like uh, that's attached to and that serves as a ground for the AC uh, for the AC source, and this uh, this return electrode is actually just like a large piece of metal or a metalized plastic rod pad, and this this uh, this is only good when it has a large surface area because the, the surgeon who uses the active electrode is what concentrates the, the current which passes through the tissue and uh, creates a lot of uh, energy and heat. And typically the electrodes would have to have a larger surface area so it can absorb on the other side of the, of the body of the patient most of the energy so it can be dispersed and the heat won't be concentrated on the back of the patient. So this is a uh, principles. It works on Ohm's law so current is equal to voltage over resistance where the amount of voltage over the resistance. The, uh, there's very little resistance on the actual electron knife, so there'd be a lot of voltage, which equals a lot of current. And the power that's applied to it also equals uh, the current and the voltage multiplied. So this power is in watts, which can be actually uh, converted to thermal energy due to the resistance in the tissue. And this would actually uh, increase the temperature of the tissue, actually uh, evaporating or vaporizing the water and burning the tissue. So like I said before, different voltages can be applied to actually get different uh, effects of the actual current being applied on the tissue, such as this video here. As you can see here, the 
the electron lamp actually catches uh, a lot of uh, it produces a lot of heat on the tissue, which actually vaporizes a lot of the uh, a lot of the water on the tissue. If you can play it again, you can know that at the top of the video, there's a lot of vapor coming out as it burns uh, through the tissue. There's different types of ways to use the electron lines, which is cutting through it. This is physical physical contact with the actual electron lines and the tissue. This this causes the uh, uh, vaporizing of the water, which then causes the vaporizing uh, vaporization of the water to come in contact with the tissue and create a uh, high high conductive plasma, which will then uh, cause the current to to uh, heat the plasma to a high high temperature degree and cut the tissue. There's also vaporization. Which is no physical concept with electron light and the tissue. So there is there's a small gap, and what happens is in that air gap, it, I, the, the air gap is actually ionized, which causes an electric discharge, electric arc discharge, and the uh, burning of the tissue is actually uh, superficial, and the skin charge is actually produced on a wire area. As you can see here, this is this is where there's no contact with the tissue and the electron light. It just ionizes the area in between and scatters most of the burning on the larger surface than skin of uh, physical contact. So some of the issues under the e knife would be that before uh, they didn't apply uh, they didn't apply uh, apply ground to the actual system. What happened was uh, when the person was going under surgery, they would just use uh, what's known as earth ground. And so the, the patient would be going under uh, the active electrode and it would pass through the tissue and back to the ground uh, where they were placed under. And this was supposed to be ideally the shortest path, uh, uh, the short, the smallest resistance path. But this wasn't always the case because when they had ECG signal, uh, ECG uh, leads placed on them, that would cause a different route for the current to pass through and cause more current on the actual pads to come out of the body and go into the EGC of computer. So this would cause, this would cause what's known as site burns, as you can see there. All right, so bipolar electrosurgery. 